Evidence shows that in most supply chains, women who often take part in the production activities in the value chains also play a role in reproductive activities at home. Further, beyond the production in the farms, women also participate as formal workers, permanent or casual, or informal workers. They, however, tend to be underpaid and their informal jobs are less secure. Most research evidence has proven that in agricultural settings, women are often not visible, even though they do a large part of the farm activities, like Rose's mother Agnes, who grows the crops but for a long time was not able to sell them. Moreover, women-owned rural businesses tend to face more constraints and receive fewer services and support than those owned by men. This is the case for Rose's aunt Elizabeth, who has experienced challenges in her business after her husband died, as men in the business were opposed to her selling fish. Value chains are sustainable and inclusive when they ensure equal participation, benefit, and contribution of women and men. To achieve this, it requires explicitly examining gender issues and proactively integrating gender-based concerns, needs, and priorities of women and men into the value chain. We call this gender-responsive programming. This is crucial to ensure that women and men are equally able to participate, contribute, and benefit from gender-responsive programming interventions, like Elizabeth, Agnes, Emmanuel, Rose and Chris. Gender responsive programming is easier than it might sound. The core of gender responsive programming is examining the gender relations in a given context or value chain, identifying the consequences of a proposed project of men, women, boys and girls, addressing potential negative outcomes, ensuring formulation of project objectives and activities that contribute to gender inclusivity, adequate resourcing or budgeting for those activities, proactively monitoring gender-specific changes, hence developing gender indicates to tra track changes. Practically, it means running through four different steps with a set of questions or considerations to ensure you are not unintentionally overlooking anything. One, gender analysis. Two, designing your interventions. Three, gender budgeting. Four, monitoring and evaluating progress. The steps presented above will help you to design, implement and monitor gender inclusivity into your project. These four categories are considered core areas as they represent the foundational elements of a systematic gender responsive programming. Without these firmly in place, gender responsive programming is highly likely to be inconsistent, potentially jeopardising the achievement of gender inclusivity.